our last uh, lecture about how when populations are equal the difference would be zero so you can see right here that the zero is already put in there so don't mess with the zero I always tell my class uh, when the two population when you're putting this in the computer don't mess with the zero the zero is supposed to be there um, okay now right here here's an interesting question the, the computer's asking me if I want to use a pooled estimate now a lot of times pooling is a kind of a more advanced technique um, this is one of the few cases in an intro stat class at least that we can pool. Pooling just means you're putting the two data sets together and because we're assuming they're equal in the null hypothesis we could probably get away with using a pooled estimate. Now even if you forgot to click on that it wouldn't actually change your numbers that drastically but we go ahead and we, this is a two population proportion hypothesis test we are allowed to pool. So we'll click on that and now I'm just going to push OK. All right, so notice I got all my nice numbers that they already calculated for me. That's very nice. I got my sample proportions. There's the null and alternative hypothesis. They're using P, P1 minus P2 equals zero. P1 minus P2 is greater than zero. All right, now um, that looks good. That's how I wanted it. Now, if I go here, I can see my, my Z-score test statistic. 2.418. We learned last time that this is counting how many standard errors sample percentage, sample proportion one is above or below sample proportion two. So it's positive, so it's above. So this um, sample proportion, 11.119 from the Valencia campus is actually 2.418 standard errors above the sample proportion for Canyon Country, this 0 0.037. Now the question is, is that significant, right? Well, he would say, oh yeah, because it's in, it's a critical value, right? The critical value, this is a right-tailed test, so my tail actually starts at 1.645. That's uh, corresponding to the 0 0.05 significance level in the right tail. So it already calculated the critical value. So I know the tail starts at 1.645, so any test statistic above 1.645 would be considered significant. So this is bigger than that than 1.645. My test statistic 2.4 is going to be in the tail determined by the critical value, which means the sample data does significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. What about my p-value? Here's my p-value. Looks very, very small. This is the way we like p-values, right? Close to zero. That's what we want. So 0 0.0078, so 0.78%. That's a very low p-value. That's lower than 1%. Definitely lower than 0 0.05 or 5%. So if the null was true, it's very unlikely that this sample data is due to just sampling variability. In other words, the difference between these sample proportions is probably not just due to sampling variability. So if you remember, your p-value is low. We're gonna, we would reject the null hypothesis, right? We're rejecting the null hypothesis. If our claim was that Valencia is significantly higher than Canyon Country, we would be supporting it. Now all of this is stems on whether it met the assumptions for this test. And you can see right here the computer gave you a very important message. It said, warning, the sample sizes are too small for normal approximation to be valid. What do they mean by that? Well, remember your z-score test statistic is based on a, a standard normal distribution. So in other words, this, the formula that makes up this z-score test statistic is only going to be accurate if it meets assumptions. And we learned last time that we needed at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures from both our samples. We do have at least 10 smokers in the Valencia data, and we definitely have at least 10 that did not smoke. We have at, le we have at least uh, 10 that did not smoke from Canyon Country, but the problem is we didn't get at least 10 smokers from Canyon Country. We only got four. So that means that this data is not going to match up very well with a normal sampling distribution. It's not going to match up very well with the standard normal distribution. In other words, we kind of are in trouble a little bit. This is not meeting the assumptions to really do the test this way. But that, that's, this is still the idea of, at least for calculating it with um, StatCato. Uh, Stat now, what would we do? What do we do? Do we stop? 
No, actually we could move to a randomized simulation. So this is the perfect example of where you'd want to move to a randomized simulation that does not is not basically um, depend on a normal sampling distribution uh, line up perfectly with this z-score test statistic, right? So is there a way we could do this without dealing with the standard normal test uh, distribution? And there is, we call that randomized simulation or randomization technique. So we're gonna move over to stat, stat key, which has great randomized simulation hypothesis testing. So uh, we're doing a difference in proportions. So under the randomization hypothesis test, we're gonna click on test for difference in proportions. Now this is gonna do a randomized simulation. So think about it, it's kinda of like Kind of like bootstrapping is to confidence intervals, randomized simulation uh, or randomization techniques are to hypothesis tests. So it's a way to get around, get some numbers without having and deal with significance and p-value without having to actually use a formal formula and a formal z standard normal distribution. So if we click on that, the first thing I want to do is put in my data. So I'm going to click edit data. All right, so I'm gonna put in my data. Now I have to remember, hope I can remember, 26 was the smokers from Valencia out of, out of, do we remember? Let me click stack Cato again. <laughs> what was it? 26 out of 218, four out of 108. All right. Okay, so now we got, let's go back here, 26 out of 218 and four out of 108. and we're gonna push OK. And there is our, right here we got our um, original sample data we can see right here. Uh, it calculated it all for us. It also, by the way, told us the proportions. We can see the proportions and then one of the big keys, the sample proportion difference uh, 0.119 minus 0.037 is 0.082. In a randomized simulation, uh, it's really important to know what was your original sample data. Now what the computer is going to do is it's going to make simulated samples based on the premise that the null hypothesis is true. So it's going to assume this is true. See where it says null hypothesis right there. I'm going to assume that's true. What kinds of random samples would we get just because of sampling variability? So let's go ahead and generate thousands of samples. But again, it's a little different than a bootstrap. A bootstrap is taking samples from a sample. This is creating um, samples based on the premise that the null hypothesis is true. I'm gonna generate a few thousand here, see what it looks like. All right, so there's our, there's our randomized simulation. Now the first thing I wanna know is, is the sample difference, 0.082, significant. So what I'd want to do is I want to see if um, uh, if it falls in the tail. Now it, traditionally what we would want to do we would try to see if the test statistic falls in the tail determined by the critical value. But we don't have that here. Instead we're going to try to figure out the tail directly about sample differences. This is a, these, are, these are all samples about sample differences. So if I click right tail here and I was using a 5% significance level, so I'm going to put 0 0.05 in the tail. All right, so it's 0 0.05 in the tail. There we go. All right, cool. So what the computer thinks is, if you're dealing with sample differences, um, you'd have to be above 0 0.055 as a sample difference to be considered significant. All right, to, can, to say that the sample data significantly disagrees with, disagrees with the null hypothesis. So our sample difference was 0.082. It's actually showed up to us right here and in the, this far under original sample. So where does 0.082 fall compared to this tail? So this is like the randomized simulation um, alternative to dealing with test statistics and critical values. Well, 0.082 is about right here definitely in the tail, in the red. So that tells me that the sample data does significantly disagree with the null hypothesis. It also tells me the sample proportion for Valencia was significantly higher than for Canyon Country. Again, these calculations are not based on this having to be perfectly normal. 
All right, this doesn't have to match up perfectly with the standard normal distribution for this to work. And this is again why this is probably a better alternative in this problem because of the sample size being too small and we didn't have enough smokers in the Canyon Country campus. Now what about the p-value? The p-value is not this number. 0 0.05 was our significance level. Don't, don't confuse them. This is not a p-value. That's a significance level. This is the tail for the significance level. Okay? Now if I want to calculate the p-value, the definition of p-value says the probability of getting the sample data or more extreme by sampling variability if the null was true. Well, this is sampling variability if the null is true, but I need the probability of getting the original sample data. So the original sample difference. So 0 0.082 is my sample difference. So all you have to do is put that number down here in this bottom box. So 0 0.082 was my sample difference. I'm going to click on that. And there's my p-value. 0 0.012. This is my estimated p-value. Now remember, this is randomized simulation, sampling variability, so you will get slight differences in the answer. So your, your p-value might be 0 0.011 or 0 0.013, but I'll bet we're all pretty close. Right? And that's not actually too far off of from what um, we got with the formula approach, though I, I almost put more stock in this one. This p-value I think is more a little more accurate just because of the issue with my sample size being too small to really support the standard normal uh, distribution. I don't think this is going to match perfectly with the standard normal distribution. But we do, it's still a low p-value. It's definitely lower than 5%. So again, we can reject the null hypothesis. And if the claim is the alternative, we're really supporting the claim. So this is telling us that there is significant evidence to support the claim that the percentage of stat students that smoke at the Valencia campus is actually higher than the percentage of stat students that smoke at the Canyon Country campus. All right. Well, thank you for uh, staying with me, and uh, I will see you all next time. So this was two population proportion.